everyone and welcome to our next lesson. So now you know about the aperture modes, you know my go-to numbers, so just to recap, the lower the aperture value, the softer the focus. Mm -hmm. So on your lens we know it's a 3.5 to 5.6. Now that means when you shoot it at 3.5 the aperture value is very low and what happens is you get a very shallow depth of field. Now, now you also know my go-to sort of mid-distance number, which is f8. That's things like uh, street photography, and obviously f14 is great for landscapes. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how good a low aperture value lens is, and we're going to use it by shooting it on a model. So the best thing to do is I want you to put your camera into AV mode. Mm -hmm. So that's AV mode. Now for people who have Nikon, uh, that will say A on your camera. And also with Panasonic and uh, Sony as well, they also say A, but Canon it's AV and Nikon it's A and all the other brands as well. So now we're in aperture priority. And this is the beautiful thing is, is that all we have to worry about is adjusting the aperture and the ISO and the shutter speed is all automatically done by the camera. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot simpler. And the good thing about this is you're focusing purely on composition and creativity and not on, have I got my camera set up correctly? Mm -hmm. So, let's put it to headshot mode. So you wake up your camera, and I want you to put your aperture into the lowest aperture value it'll go, which is that dial there. Okay. 5.6. Yep. And now what we're going to do with our model, we're going to take a nice shot. So I want you to take a nice portrait now. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and let's have a look at that shot. You see how, the, how she's in direct sunlight? Well, actually, down, direct sunlight is really harsh and it's a really unflattering light and um, it's very hard to look, to get the best out of someone, especially the older you become. If, you, if I was if you photograph me, he's older, I would be even worse than if I was photographed me in my 20s because of the, the wrinkles and the creases and so on and so forth. And the best light you can use is a very diffused, very soft light. And on a midsummer's day or a bright summer's day or a bright day like today, the best way to do that is to shoot it in the shade. So what we're going to try and do now is take the same shot. We're going to shoot it in a softer light. And I saw some trees over there and we'll see if we can get a better photo. Great. So let's do that now. Yeah. Okay. So now um, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot it in the shade. And because we're going to do that, in theory, you're going to have a softer light and uh, the, mo the model's going to have a it's, it's better aesthetics, really. Um, photographers lose sleep on obtaining the best light possible. Mm -hmm. And this is just a quick hack into getting better light is by shooting under the shade. There's a few things we can do to make the shot even better. And the first thing we're going to do is, remember I said stick it on the lowest aperture mm -hmm. possible? This time, another thing that affects a shot to give it a softer depth of field or a shallower depth of field is by zooming in. So. This is a 18 to 55 mil lens. So at 55 mil, you should have a shallower depth of field. So why don't we zoom in a bit mm -hmm. and see how that affects the shot. But you'll notice that your aperture value jumps up to 3.5 to 5.6. And that's because it's a kit lens and basically you get what you pay for. So we spend a bit more money. The aperture value will be more consistent throughout the zoom range as you zoom in. And that's because um, of the optics. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another shot now mm -hmm. and we're going to see how that photo turns out. Can you zoom in to the yep. 55? Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I want you to take another shot, but I want you to stick her head higher up into the okay. frame. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Okay, okay, that's a better shot. Now there's something else we can do. So when you do a portrait, you can get a different feeling to a photo. So imagine if you're going to photograph a CEO of a company. Mm -hmm. They're quite big, powerful people, or may maybe a military figure or military leader. Well, if you shoot from a lower perspective, you'll find that they add more um, drama, more uh, energy into a shot. So why don't we shoot a little bit lower down mm -hmm. from this perspective and see what we can get. Okay, so okay, so now you see how she adds a bit more impact into the photo. Mm -hmm. See how it's quite um, more impactful yep. compared to the shot before. Yep. So you've got this lovely soft light, 
you know, she adds a bit more drama to the photo and it's just from a different perspective. It makes a big difference. Yeah, totally. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up another level now and we're going to swap out your kit lens to a designated portrait lens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Great. let's stand up again. So this is a very different lens. The principle's the same. Where yours is a focal point of 55mm, this is an 85mm lens. So it zooms in a bit more uh, and that works really well with the optics. The major difference between these two lenses is the lowest aperture you can go is 3.5. This is 1.2. Now, not too many lenses on the market can go to 1.2. And the reason why I'm showing you this is I want you to be aware of A, what a different focal length can do, mm -hmm. B, what different apertures can do on a shallow depth of field. And you can really start to see how to get the shallow depth of field shots. And I just, don't, I just want you to be aware that when you get a really shallow depth of field photo, it's because they've got a really low aperture value. And the problem is generally you have to pay more money to get a shallower depth of field. Although there are some amazing entry level lenses that have a very shallow depth of field, not quite as shallow as this, but you'll get a very good result. So why don't we swap cameras mm -hmm. and we'll Great. see what we get. Okay, so you've got to take the lens cap off first. Yeah. So the principles stay the same, although it's a different camera, and we're going to set the aperture to f2. So I've, I've given you a bit of um, tolerance. So f1.2 is such a shallow depth of field that your nose and your eye could be out of focus. It's th that shallow. Oh, wow. okay. So that's pretty, pretty shallow. Yeah. So if you got at an f2, you have about this much to play with. That means your ear is going to be out of focus, but your nose and eye is going to be in focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do now is to focus onto her face and see if we get a nice portrait. Okay, nice. brilliant. So what we're going to do now is because that's a really lovely shot, we're going to put it down to f1.2 and I'd like you to take another shot. Okay, and you see you've got a lovely depth of field. Yeah. Now, another really good way of getting even more depth of field is by getting closer into the shot. So let's take a couple of steps in. And this time I want you to do the same shot and you'll see that the image will get compressed even more. Okay, so look at how soft the background is. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do another shot now. We're going to get in there maybe a little bit too close, but you'll see how shallow a depth of field will go and how soft it will get. Um, so why don't you try another shot? Okay. So focus on her eye and then recompose the shot. So half press the shutter button on her eye and then okay and there you have a lovely soft focus shot in beautiful um, soft lighting and I think that's a really beautiful shot yeah absolutely there you go great so that's it that's all you need to know so this that's to recap on that so a shallow depth of field is by having a really low aperture value my go-to number is the lowest I have on that lens is 1.2 a bigger telephoto lens will compress the shot by the optics. So 85 mil is a really good number to go to, but a 50 mil up to 150 mil is probably where you want to be with um, more of a headshot mm -hmm. kind of lens. And then get closer to your subject and make sure there's a lot of space behind your background. Because we're shooting outside, there's an immense amount of space behind the subject and we've got it nice, nice and close. So there you have it. That's how you take a headshot.